How we doing everyone? It's John and today I'm going to do a video on campus networking, how to configure a general kind of network layout and include some kind of best practices which are considered useful. So, <laughs> uh, let's just kick on and do it then. Right, let me just discuss what I've got here. We've got the three tier hierarchical model, the core, which will be running EIGRP down to the distribution layer. In the distribution layer, we're going to have these four layer three switches for posterity, they'll be called D1, D2, D3, D4, and they will have HSRP, and that will be synced up with each VLAN's STP instance. I'll explain a bit, a bit more of that later on. Going down to the access layer, and we're going to have these VLANs, VLAN 5s, uh, 3 and 5 on this switch, 3 and 5 on this switch, 9 and 14, 9 and 14, 34, 37, 34, 37, 42, 46, and 42 and 46. So as you can see, the VLANs have actually been spanned, and that's actually informed my decision to leave uh, down to the access layer a switch network because some people prefer to use layer 3 right through the network, right down to the access layer. It removes the need for HSRP, it removes any kind of span entry issues because you don't have span entry, and it allows for more kind of intelligent layer 3 uh, traffic manipulation. So it is good. However, when you've got VLAN spanned across switches, I think it makes more sense to use it this way and also it costs a lot less because if you're going to use full routing, you're going to have to have more capable switches, i.e. layer 3 switches which are um, capable of doing this, cap this type of implementation. So that's just a general overview. We're also going to have DHCP for each VLAN on these switches here in the distribution layer. So for example, VLANs 3, 5, 9, and 14. We'll have a DHCP pull on that. Same on this, 3, 5, 9, 14. On D3 and D4, however, we're going to have a DHCP pull for VLANs 34, 37, 42, 46. And on this one, the same again, 34, 37, 42, 46. We'll exclude, obviously, the IP addresses which we're using. In the case of the physical switches, that will be as you can see here, we'll have 192.168 and the VLAN number. So for example, VLAN 3 will be 192.168.3.2. This will be 3.2, 3.3, and the virtual IP will be 3.1. That'll be true for VLAN 5, 9, 14. And again, over here, we're going to have HSRP will be 192.168. VLAN ID, so it'll be 34.1, 37.1, 42.1, 46.1, 37 and the physical will be 32. 4.2, 37 .2, 42 .2, 46 .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2, .2
So I just went ahead and configured that, and I'll just quickly show you what I mean. So if we just do a uh, enable show IP int brief, and we will exclude the unassigned. You can see these IP addresses are all already on there. The only one which I haven't configured is the layer three port channel, the very, very first network address. I thought that might be kind of useful just to at least demonstrate that on the camera. So, yep, that's pretty much what I think I'm doing. No more really to say. Oh, apart from that, we're also going to be using rapid PVSD plus on all of the switches. So this will be here, 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 and this, these four here and the access layer, we don't need to use that on here because there's no spanning tree running in the core at all. So the reason for that is we're trying to get um, as fast a convergence as possible. The same reason is why I've chosen EIGRP. Now, I actually think that OSPF is a much better network protocol. You can do more with it. It's also an open standard. EIGRP is kind of an open standard now, but OSPF is better. However, in this um, environment, I think EIGRP kind of shines because the convergence is so fast that with rapid spanning tree throughout your network, you can have quite a, a, a good network conversion in all your areas from the layer two and the layer three. I think it works quite well. So we're going to use EIGRP for that. Down here, we're also going to have some port security. We'll I think we'll make the port security and maybe change it to restrict so it'll um, be a, different from the default of just shut down. And we'll also put perhaps, yep, we're going to be doing port fast down here and BPDU guard enabled. You should always have BPDU guard enabled if you're going to be using port fast, just in case it's just going to be a nightmare otherwise. And I think we're going to put in some storm control as well. So we'll have some storm control between the access and the trunk ports. And I think that's pretty much it. Yep. So let's just kick on and do it then. The first thing which I'll do is we'll define the VLANs we're going to configure. So just for posterity, I'll just show you what I've got configured so far. It's all just your defaults apart from those IP addresses. Actually, do you know what? I won't, I'll quickly do the interface port channel because I left that out in the interest of just demonstrating that. So we'll do that first then. So, if we do our show CDP neighbor, we can see that the ports connected to the core two switch are gigabit zero one and gigabit zero two. So they will have to go into the port channel. So the first thing I'm going to do is do interface port channel one. We're going to no switch port it and we're going to put an IP address on it for the very first address of that network. Okay. And we're going to go across to core two and do the same thing. Show CDP neighbor. And to get to core one, it's the same. It's gig zero one and gig zero two. So we'll go interface port channel one. We'll no switch port it and we'll put the IP address on it. Yep. <laughs> Good typing, John. And we'll no shut. Okay, so the port channel is configured. However, what we actually need to do is put those gigabit zero one and gigabit zero two interfaces into the actual port channel, so let's do that now. So, we'll do a conf t and we'll do int range gigabit zero oh, one to two, and we'll just no switch port them. And we're going to do a channel grip, call it grip one, and we'll make the mode on. Okay. <clears throat> and similarly, we'll do the same here. We'll do conf t and we'll do int range gigabit 0, 1 to 2. We'll no switch port it. We'll put channel group 1 mode on. That should bring that up. So let's just ch test our connectivity. This is our IP address in this switch. Obviously, that's going to ping because it's up. Let's try the one in core 1. So that's us. We've actually got connectivity between the two core switches. The port channel is now up. And 
we'll also put the load balancer on that. So we'll do port channel load balance and we'll do source DSTIP and we'll do the same over here. Conf T, we'll do actually double check that. Put the right one in that. Yeah, source destination IP, that's correct. Doubting myself there. <laughs> so the port channel load balance and we'll do right. So that's that done. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is put on the VLANs, define these VLANs. So let's go and do that just now. So at the left hand side, we're going to have VLANs 3, 5, 9 and 14. So let's do that now. VLAN 3. I really should be naming these, but I'm just not going to because it's just going to save time. VLAN 5, VLAN 9, VLAN 14. Close you down. Same thing here. The VLAN 3, VLAN 5, VLAN 9, and VLAN 14. Did I show VLAN? Yep, these are now configured. Let's go on to the switches on the right hand side, D3 and D4. And the ones we've got here are <coughs> 34, 37, 42, 46. Let's go and do that. And we'll do VLAN 34, VL oh, VLAN 37, VLAN 42, and VLAN 46. That's them configured. <laughs> do VLAN 34, VLAN 37, VLAN 42 and VLAN 46. That's them configured. Okie doke. Now, what I'm going to do is, like I say, these VLANs are going to be spanned on these switches here. So I'll have VLAN 3 and 5, 3 and 5, 9, 14, 9, 14, 34, 37, 34, 37, 42, 46, 42, and 46. So let's just go and do that now. I was kind of reluctant to actually keep all this stuff in, but I thought, you know what, I might as well just show you whilst I'm doing it. It's not the most uh, riveting view, I suppose, but if you're trying to do it from scratch, it might be a bit of a, a help to you to see it all done. So just bear with me and persevere through the board. <laughs> uh, conf T, VLAN 3, VLAN 5. VLAN 9, VLAN 14. Okay, close that down. And now we move over to here, which will be VLAN 34 and 37. Same again on this one, VLAN 34 and 37. Oh. One was this one again? This is, yeah, 42 and 46. And the last one for this will be okay. And what else will I do? Lastly, I'll go up here and I'll configure 
Free Land 250. Well, I actually name this one since there's not many to do. Data Center. And same again on here. Okay, so that's the VLANs configured. And we have all the routed links up, I think. I've configured all written here, yep, yep. Oh, the last one I need to do is actually, I'm gonna make this a routed link actually, so we'll do a CDP neighbor. And DC2 is on FA05. No switch port that. Uh, I can't think what IP address I gave that. I'll go with what 69. I think that's been used as network, so we'll just chance it. <laughs> and we'll use 70 for this one. DC1 is on the same FA05, no switch port, and we'll do Okay, we have connectivity there. Right, what I'm going to do is just stop this right now, we'll call this part 1. I know it's been kind of a uneventful one, more of an explanatory video, but we're going to get things going in the next one. The next thing I'm going to be doing is configuring HSRP, put all the interface VLANs up, HSRP, configure rapid spanning tree, and I think I will do yep, HSRP spanning tree, I think I'll leave it for that one, and I'll do that in the next video. So just hang tight and I'll see you guys in a wee minute.